Here is fabric. This is 110 centimeters wide and I've got four and a half meters of it. There. Now, you saw the other one. I've cut that into four. This is, if you think 110 centimeters from 150 centimeters is 40 centimeters. That's the width of one of the pieces, if you remember the pieces. They're about 37 centimeters. So instead of cutting it into four, you cut it into three. And you do it like so. It's still easy. This is, this is how I do it, and it really is quite simple. So, it's obviously going to be laid out differently, by the way. So you saw the other one. I've got the body in the same place, and you can see I've got the front overlap and the collars running up and down the selvage here. But you'll notice that there's no sleeves. That's because that extra, this is three meters, the same as the other fabric, that extra meter 50 that makes it four meters 50, or five yards, that's taken up by the sleeves. They sit on top of the body now, and you cut them that way. So this is a great one if you are considering cutting all the way down, that you can cut this in one big strip, but of course you don't have to. I'll show you how to do that. So this is how it is. How do you press it? I start by pressing the whole thing in half. So selvage to selvage, and you're gonna get the center line. So same start as the last one. Oh, this is much longer. It's unruly, but we shall persevere and do well. Is that lined up? Of course I would do this with unbelievable precision. I'm doing it myself. That is actually something about this garment, is that the precision, you can do it with unbelievable precision and you come out with the most beautiful things. I've also done it in a rush and just hoed into the fabric, cut it, rammed it through the sewing machine, pressing of course, but, but not really measuring, doing all my preparation. You still end up with a kimono style garment. You still end up with a lovely robe at the end. You know, there's something, something a bit informal about making it. I think it's because of the straight lines and the square cuts. It really does help. Anyway, you can see here, I now have a fold line running all the way down there, which I can cut. But first, the next thing I do is fold these in halfway. Now, you could have a fabric with a fantastic pattern or a, uh, or a check or something on it, and it will have a line all the way down halfway. You measure in, go, okay, that's the, that's the halfway point between these two is here. And it turns out that's where there's a beautiful pattern all the way. That's great, do that. If not, if like this, you've just got plain stuff, you you should measure, really. Unless you've got a really keen eye and you can just, you can just sort of eyeball halfway down for four and a half meters, then, you know, go for broke. But I would say measure it, uh, chalk it up, put a line in or something and then just press it and then you'll know you've got the right thing. Again, if you get it a bit off, it doesn't matter. There's straight seams, everything will work out in the end. And it's an anti-fit garment. It doesn't fit you to the body. So it's a very forgiving thing to make. So here you go. You can see a fold of this in. I haven't removed the selvage. That's something I didn't mention. I don't, I don't usually remove the selvage unless it's in, extremely uh, unsightly or bulky. I often just keep it and incorporate it into the garment. Um, I'll talk about that later, but but this is also so you can see where the selvage is and what part of the fabric we're using. So there you go. Press that down. That's uh, half the width of this piece, all the way down. And then if I fold this over like magic, oh, that is that is lovely actually. Look at that, that's satisfying. Should make a meme out of that. Look at that, that beautiful selvage in the middle of it and it all meets up perfectly. Wow, you'd think I'd done this a few times. Okay, so I've done that. Now you can see how it works. So I've cut it into three 
but there's two and then this is the three so you're still really cutting it into four but it's, it, you're dividing it by three essentially these two make up one of them you can do it so you have so you do actually divide the whole piece of cloth into three and you have all these ones running up one side and this running along here i often do it in the center because as i was talking about the selvage it means you don't have a selvage on just one side of the body so if there is a selvage is obviously harder um it's stronger than the rest of the fabric usually isn't it i'm trying to see if i have some fabric with selvage on it this is the actual fabric I cut it from. Uh, so you can see here, that selvage, it's it's um, it's almost like a basket or a canvas weave. So it's much stronger compared to the rest of the fabric. It won't make that much of a difference if it's on both sides, but you would feel this in the seams if you had this on one side. Um, but then again, that's up to you. I prefer to do it this way and it's actually easier to work everything out this way than dividing the whole thing into thirds because then you this one you're folding in half then half again if you're doing it in thirds you're measuring all the way down for the whole thing it's your preference really so i'm going to start at the sleeves um and you can cut all the way down in fact i'll do that but but just so you know if you do leave once you, you have to work out the direction of your fabric to see if you can, what part of this you can leave. But technically I could cut all the way up to the middle of the body here and leave that closed so I could cut for, um, for three meters straight if I want. Yeah, that's up to you. So anyway, first things first, I don't actually cut the center piece off. I cut off the sides. Now, there's a lot of unmarked material here. And if I'm using this kind of fabric, I've bought, say you've bought four and a half meters. Some places won't let you buy a half meter. That's, uh, I think that's um, five yards. Some people won't let you buy a four and a half meters. And if so, you can buy four meters or you can buy five meters and you'll either have stuff left over or you'll have smaller sleeves. That's the end of that. But, you'll notice that there's extra length here. So that's 180 centimeters and that's 160 centimeters. And I use those to make the sash. You'll notice I didn't talk about a sash on the other one. Um, I'll go through that in a minute. Let's cut this. So all the way down, this is the collar. Again, you might want to take the, the selvage off around the collar, but you're going to fold under a seam allowance anyway. And on the collar, you don't need to worry, you know, it's not going to add too much bulk, depending on your, on your selvage, to the rest of the garment. And it can be quite lovely to sew a collar with a selvage on one side because it's completely straight and, and does exactly what you want to. So, like the other one, I have my collars, one at 90 centimetres, one at 180. You see there, so that's 180 centimeters. That's five foot, that's six foot, I'm pretty sure. If my calculations are correct, that's as tall as, with, taller than me actually. Um, and that can be your, that can be put together with something else to make a sash if you want. Or it can be kept to make a collar on another kimono if you want to do a contrast. That's really getting crafty, isn't it? It's like British sewing bee level. And there's the other parts, that's 160, that's 180. Uh, when I do do this, I either, because I do like symmetry in a sash, I either cut the 20 centimeters off that, so it's um, 160 and 160, three meters 20 long, and then I fold it in half. Or I would cut one of these in half and sew the two pieces to the uh, each end. That's just because I'm pernickety. You can just sew this and have one that's off center because it's a sash it's going to wrap around so much because there's about three meters of fabric there but that's what i do with mine and making a sash is often about just um patchworking together of all the bits that you can <laughs> at the end there you go there are the okumi the front overlaps finished and it's starting to look recognizable 
from the last one. So the next part is the sleeves. Best thing to do really is to measure and cut across here. So from the get go, if you're not cutting all the way down, you haven't mixed the two together and you don't know what's going on. Sleeves, first thing you do when you've cut the sleeves is you press them at the halfway point so you know where the top is. And this little part, the top of the sleeve where you've pressed it, this crease, it's called the Sodeyama in Japan. And it means shoulder mountain. Yama means mountain, um, sorry, and Sode means sleeve, so, so sleeve mountain. Um, because it does, it looks like a little elongated Fuji, like a Toblerone along the top of the sleeve. The very important part of a kimono is that part. The other part is the top of the shoulder. So where the body is in half, and that's called the katayama. And that means shoulder mounting because this sits on the shoulder again. And the reason I keep going on about pressing this is because that's how you know where to join the two together because that's the center of both of them. And that is this length here in Japan is called the yuki. So that's part of your measurements when you're making a kimono is from the center back neck to your wrist. That's how you know how to divide up the fabric here and work out how wide it is. But another little fascinating part, it's covered in little fascinating, um, little fascinating names, I think, the kimono. It's such a, such a charming outfit and it's got a lot of charm about it as well. Two sleeves, two collars, two akumi, and then I'm going to do the same as before. And cut up to the center of here. Put in the katayama, the shoulder mountain. Um, this one is really important. The shoulder mountain, this middle part is, is essential because when you put your collar when you insert the collar into the garment, the collar sits about five centimeters, two inches, no, five, ten, no, five centimeters, about two inches down from the center point. So it's going to look like when it's finished, like the, the back neck is here at the back of the collar, but it's not, it's five centimeters above that. And if you don't get that right, it means that everything goes off go skew with and it means that your two hems don't meet at the end they start to do uh, that and then you have to do all this this mad hemming and chopping stuff off and if you've already decorated the garment then you're up the creek because everything will be off and kimono traditionally are painted and they're sort of done on a toile and, they, and then there's uh, sewn together lightly, painted and then put back, but they're finally put back together once it's decorated. So if it's off, it's off. <laughs> um, so yeah, mark this, keep that marked, know where that is, because then your hems will line up. Otherwise you'll end up, and I've done this a million times because I haven't marked it properly, and you go to sew the hem all around the bottom at the very end, and it's like that, or worse, it's like that. And you, you're chopping stuff off, the whole thing's wonky. There you have it. That is the narrow fabric.